Hey everyone, welcome to another video on culture and identity, a revision video looking this time at class and identity. As ever, these are just suggested potential paragraphs that you could talk about. There might be other examples that you can use, um, depending on which textbooks you use. There might be other theorists, etc., that you can link in. But these are just nice uh, suggestions just on, uh, I think it's four to five paragraphs on things that you could write about for a 20 or a 10 marker. So the main kind of classes within the United Kingdom traditionally would be working middle and upper class. These are generally based on your employment and maybe your wealth, your standing in society. Um, recently though, there has been arguments about how these are seen as a little bit too strict and there's been changes to this. So there's been movements between um, like middle upper class, uh, lower middle class, and also the emergence of new classes, which perhaps or even below working class because that gives a connotation that you are in employment if you're working class. So new um, classes such as the underclass, which we're going to explore a little bit today. So the first paragraph that you could potentially talk about, it doesn't really matter if you start with working class or upper class, um, is we're going to look at the working class. Now, these are traditionally linked to employment and the work that you do, the jobs, the industry that you're in. Working class traditionally take real pride in their employment of working in heavy industry, using their hands, manual work. It's seen as a manly job, and this is very important to the working class man traditionally. It's seen as a bit of an extension of their work, uh, their identity and their culture. So they spend a lot of time outside of work, still within the same kind of culture of work. Some examples that we could talk about would be football. So the work, football is a working class sport. It's although it's been um, maybe taken over by the middle classes um, and Sky TV, etc. More recently, but traditionally football was set up as a means of recreation for workers within industry, within factories, etc. So that's a picture there of the Arsenal football team back in the day. Um, and this was born out of the Woolwich Arsenal, which is a, a munitions factory in Greenwich in London. And these um, kind of teams um, were set up as a means of um, like leisure, of recreation, of downtime, where people could play football, but also people could go along and watch their team, watch their fellow workers play. And that, that was seen as really important to them. Going to the pub is very much a working class traditional thing and it's seen as really important for working class men that they can go to these pubs and they can, um, you know, have some downtime. But traditionally, working class people would spend a lot of their time in working men's clubs. And this is so this would be a club that was set up either maybe even on site of a, say, a pit or very close within the um, community where working men could go along and spend time with men of similar um, occupations, uh, chats, stuff like that. Very much a man only position. Women wouldn't be part of that. And how they lived, like the places that they lived, um, their culture was very important in terms of the link to their employment as well. So living in um, mining villages, very close to where they worked in very similar houses, um, these terraced um, pit houses or pit cottages, and that was seen, again, as, as very much part of the culture and identity of a working class person. Only a working class person would live in those houses. Um, whether or not they took pride in living in those houses, I think they possibly did. But certainly it was seen as part of a working class culture. Someone who lived there was working class. This shows that there's a great importance in the collective identity of working class people. All of these things that I've talked about as application examples are very much collective. They're working with each other, they're spending time with each other. And that was really important to spend time with other people of similar ideology, similar identity. You could evaluate this by saying that the modern working class has become more privatized today and more individualized. We're not as collective and community focused as we used to be as a working class. Um, this could be because we have an increase in places to live, perhaps, but also the um, changing in employment. So less community based employment where it's it's not seen as as needed to work as long in long groups, large groups, sorry, uh, or have this um, kind of reliance on one another. 
we are more individual. Even the working class are more individual in today's society. And so this shows that maybe working class uh, culture and identity is less important in today's society. There's a decline in that traditional working class employment, as I say, and this could be a, a paragraph on its own. So the industry that's normally associated with traditional working class identity is declining. There's less pits, there's less manufacturing, there's the rise in technology and the use of robots and things like that. The decline in the use of fossil fuels, the closing of the pits has led to a decline in what traditionally would be seen as a working class job and a working class identity. So for example, manufacturing is now more technology based and you need education for this. So IT, engineering, things like that. So there's a greater emphasis on the education side. And this could potentially mean that those kind of traditional jobs are moving more towards the middle class. And it's potentially creating a new working class where they have a little bit more disposable income. So they're not necessarily engaging with the traditional cultural traditions of working class that we've seen previously. So this shows that class is possibly less important in forming our identity. And we're actually looking for new ways of forming our identity. So maybe it's the lifestyle that we live, lead, the place that we live, the car that we drive, because we have that little bit more disposable income. That is more important than that collective working class identity we looked at previously. However, it is dangerous to generalize. There's a lot of working class people who still see their roots as very important. We get every year, we still have people doing the Jarrah March from Jarrow all the way down to London, um, which is still seen as really important. We have trade union rallies in um, Durham, for example, in the north of England, where there is a strong mining community and these um, people are still representing these mining communities. Trade unions are still vitally important and still seen as really desirable to a lot of working class people. And it's part of their historical heritage um, and tradition of being working class. So we can't just say that the working class traditional identity is dying out, but actually maybe it's just changing a little bit. The middle class to define compared to the working class, it's normally more non-manual working jobs. So working in offices, working in banks, etc. Um, that's how we would normally define middle class. So kind of jobs that you would need a bit of education for. Um, and with this comes a little bit more of uh, more money and more disposable income. And this, I think, leads the middle class to think of their culture and identity is a bit superior to the working class, more intellectually developed. There's a stronger emphasis on education and professional occupation within the middle classes, and that gives them the sense of superiority. There's definitely less community within a middle class. It is more individualized. Um, buying houses, which are more detached, literally and um, metaphorically, from the community. So kind of moving out of the, the city into more suburban areas. Cultural capital is really important to the identity of the middle class as well. And they want to try to show this off, that they have this cultural capital, this intelligence, the books that they read, the places they go, the holidays they go to. They don't just go to Butlins on holiday to be entertained, but they go to the Colosseum in Greece and stuff like that. And uh, that is really important to the middle classes. Um, trips to museums, being getting a graduation, um, you know, having those real suppose power jobs within society. Um, this helps us understand how the middle class see themselves as culturally superior, that they have this wealth and that their identity and their culture is much more superior to the working classes. And it helps as well define the differences between the two. It's easy to see we've got the manual compared to the non-manual. We have got the education compared to the um, non-education. Um, that helps us understand the difference between the working and the middle classes. However, as we've discussed in previous um, points and also in previous videos, there's a blurring between this middle class and working class. Um, I would say myself, I would be an example of that. I'm from a working class background, lived on a council estate, lived in a council house. Um, Mum and dad didn't have a lot of money. Mum and dad did manual jobs when they did work. But I'm now a teacher, which is seen as traditionally a middle class occupation. I um, have my own house, you know, go on holidays and stuff like that. Um, 
there's a blurring between what traditionally is seen as working class and particularly middle class. And it's about those employment opportunities that we talked in the previous um, video as well. Upper class, there's two kind of distinct types of upper class. There's the old upper class, which is seen as the aristocracy. Um, and we've got the new upper class, which are maybe more self-made upper class. And these are seen as the business elite. These are the ones with the wealth, etc. Um, in terms of their identity and their culture, they do things which are much more high in cultural capital and are seen as um, very well to do in society. So they'll go to the Chelsea Flower Show. They'll go to the boat race between Oxford and Cambridge, drinking pims, dressed in lovely jackets if you wish uh, to say that they are lovely i'm um, going to the royal garden party and being invited to places like that and ascot and wearing big fancy has, hats and dresses and things like that very much based around those eton oxford cambridge educational opportunities as well okay so this helps us understand how upper class is very self-selecting and it's a bit of an exclusive club to get into it is based on wealth but also not just what you know but who you know so if you're part of the aristocracy it doesn't matter really how intelligent you are there will always be opportunities dare i say that the british government is a very good example of that currently but let's move on from that however there is a social blurring of what is accessible to these cultures so generally the opera and things like that would be accessible just to the upper classes because it needed money. But now you can go onto YouTube and watch ballet and opera. It's more accessible. So you could argue that these cultural and I am um, these things that form their identity, the pursuits, the um, entertainment, the things that they found very, um, I don't know, secular to them, I suppose. It's becoming blurred because more people are open to that. On the other hand, as well, we've got people like Prince William, who has a football team. Nothing wrong with Prince William having a football team, but he's part of the aristocracy. And football is traditionally seen as working class. So there's that blurring between the two. Last thing I want to very quickly look at is the argument that maybe class is just no longer important at all. So postmodernists, Kruk, Pekulski and Walters talk about how class is now is fragmented and it's not based on class anymore but actually it's based on other things and other things have become more important such as your sexuality such as um, maybe your age and fashion and things like that there's an increase in other ways to gain your identity whereas your class used to be the thing that gave your identity we have so many more things such as the media through globalization through access and other cultures so this helps us understand how, particularly the young, class is seen as less important today than even before. And it's not maybe even on the table as a thing anymore that we don't identify as a class. I don't identify as a class that much. Postmodernism, however, fails to say that for many, there's no alternative. They, they can't access their identity from anything other than their class. It's not available to them because they don't have the wealth, they don't have the opportunities particularly for maybe the underclass whose parents don't have employment on educated that they will just follow in that suit marxists however would say that this class is um kind of still influential even if it's indirect because it's kind of forced on us through socialization through the identity that is given to us by um, the media so if we think about things like jeremy kyle etc it's pushing this kind of class onto people Hope that's been useful. Very quick run through of uh, class and identity. Any comments, any questions, please stick them where you need to. I hope you found this useful. Keep an eye out for some of the other videos that I'll be putting up over the next coming weeks and months. Um, yeah, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye.